Blood on the leaves And blood at the Black, 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 black body swinging In the southern breeze
Next thing you're going to learn, you ain't going to be looking at us like that. See, looking at us like that, that's going to get your black ass lashes. See, my name's Paul. But you're going to come to know me as a whip master around here. It's what I do. I whip all Master Morris's niggas. I'm damn good, too. Like nobody as strong or as firm on one of these in their hand as I am. And if you keep looking at me like that, nigga, you're gonna find out for yourself real quick. Well, what you think, Reese? Lordy Paul, this one here. Yeah, this one here. All mine. All yours to take care of personally. Well, I'll be. Thank you, Paul. Hell. Now, Reese, we have been over this on numerous occasions. I will not have that language in this house. This is a clean Christian home. You are setting a bad example. You heard your mother, boy. I apologize. Excuse me. Stand up, boy. Let me get a good look at you. Can you hear right? He sure as hell can. Nigga, your master said stand up. I mean, you stand! How old are you, boy? Do you know? Answer, boy. How old are you? Twenty-five. That's master. Twenty-five. Hmm. You sure are a ripe young man. You gonna get a lot of work done for us around here. That's for sure. Introduce us, Paul. I'm sure he'd love to meet us. Well, before I go any further, let me introduce my family to you. Who, and let me say beforehand, has got just as much authority over you as I do, I should add. If they say jump, then you better jump. You understand me, boy? I'm Bertram Morris. Everybody around here calls me Bert, but you're going to call me Master. Now this lovely, delightful woman here... Oh, stop it. ...is my lovely wife, Madeline Whitfield Morris. You gonna refer to her as Mrs. Morris. Oh, Miss Madeline, that's fine as well. Oh, Miss Madeline, either or is fine. Now this, this young stud right here is my only son, Reese. You see, Reese... Is fixed in to, uh, to, today is a very very special day, and tomorrow is gonna be even his 26th birthday. And you as first nigger, you see. So we've decided around here it was time for him to be the proper disciplinarian around here, because eventually he's gonna take over the place. He's gonna be running it, and doing all the work around here. So he'll need to know what all goes on. So this is where you come in at, boy. Hmm. I do apologize. I forgot to ask you what your birth name is, boy. What's your birth name? Theo. Hmm. Theo. Well, that would be short for Theodore, I would assume. Yes, ma'am, Miss Madeline. And do you have a last name? Brown. Theodore Brown, Miss Madeline. <laughs> Theodore Brown. Would you look at that? It makes you seem so smart, all intelligent like. It'd be my father's name, ma'am. And was your father a smart man, or was he like most all the others? He, he... Smart? Now, I ain't a single one of them smart. Now, your father ain't here now, is he, boy? Where is your father anyhow? Don't know, Beat sir. Beat to death? Run off? Sold? Oh, no, sir. I ain't seen him in years. That's enough. Theodore, what you think, son? You like that name or you want to change it to something else? Your choice. You know, I think Theodore works for now. If I don't get used to it, I just give him another name. You see, niggers are lucky if they get to keep their birth name. So you remember that boy? You remember you one of the lucky ones. So. Theodore it is, and Theo for short. Yes, master. 
Good. Well, you know, it's been a rather long day around here at the plantation, and these eyes of mine are getting very, very tired, and I need to get some rest before supper, so me and Miss Madeline, we're gonna get some rest, and you boys, y'all show them around, show them where everything's at around here, and how everything goes. And Theo, everything's gonna be all right, boy. Get you some rest, cause sunrise comes early in the morning, my dear. Until we meet again, Theodore Graham, welcome to the Morris Plantation. Welcome to the Moors Plantation. Like you deserve some kind of holy welcome. <laughs> I'm betting you ain't never been in no place like this before, have you? There ain't no place like the Moors Plantation. It'd be better than all the plantations in the state of Alabama as well as any plantation here in the South. It'd be tougher. Now let me tell you something, Theodore. My father, he's a nice man, two knots. He's led up too much as he's gotten older, but me, I am here to be the law and order whether he wants to admit it or not. So, there's some things I need to test out. First, boy, your physical features, your strength. It gets mighty hot out there and that sun wears you out, ain't that right, boys? That sure right. does. They know they out in it all damn day. Point is, I need niggas that are strong. Niggas who push on through the pain like there ain't nothing to it. Niggas who get the job done. You understand, boy? Yes, sir. Yes, what? Let's not start off on the wrong foot now. Yes, sir. Master. Master. All right, Paul, come here. Bring your arm out, chest high like this. Come on now, bring it up. Go on. All right, Theo, bring them knees up, boy. Sir? Your knees, boy, like you're running, but you're staying in the same spot. Give me that damn whip, Paul. I ain't got no time for your nigga games. I say get them knees up, boy. Get them up now. Go. Yeah. Get up here and get them knees up, boy. Master, 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 Maybe we get y'all on the field one day, have y'all race. What you think about that, the old dog? Hmm. Look at this, boys. Burt Morris may have been right. After all, we may have very well found us a keeper out here. There's <laughs> just something else about you, Theodore. Something I can't quite put my finger on. Interesting. Eighteen forty-five. I was bought at the Natchez Town auction in Mississippi by two men representing the Morris family, who owned the Morris plantation here in Mobile, Alabama. Now every nigga know the Morris plantation. Will Will it be known for the toughest place in the South? From the handlers to the number of niggas who don't make it out. I ain't never been to a place like this. This ain't what I used to. This ain't what I expect. What if I end up like all the other niggas I hear about that come out and don't make it? What if this, what if this place be the end of me? I start out meant for more than this. Now here's how things will work with me and you, Theodore. You gonna do what I say when I say it. No lip, no back talk, no dogging, any of that. You are getting lashes. These two men here, they see you ain't doing your fair share. They gonna tell me, and if I hear that, that ain't very good for you now, is it? 300 pounds of cotton every day. You bring me back $2.99, you're getting lashes. When I say 300 pounds of cotton, damn it, boy, I mean 300 pounds of cotton. Now, you may be thinking, well, hell, Master, that, that sure seems like a lot. That's because it is. Here at the Moore's Plantation, we keep only the strongest, most efficient niggas. 
niggas who do the work they supposed to do and do it well. So, your ass ain't up and ready to work in the morning after that cop crow standing in line waiting for instruction, you are getting lashes. You get my point, boy? Don't be a problem. Niggas that become problems, well, they don't last long around here. <laughs> <laughs> so I suggest you just obey, boy. Be a good nigga. Be a good nigga, Theodore, and everything gonna be quite all right. Oh yeah. Me and you. We gonna get along just fine, boy. Just fine. You agree? Yes, best. Good boy. All right, fellas, get his ass on out of here. I'll see you in the morning. Get over right here early. Get over here. Love it, boy. Come on. Yeah, back there. This different. Back where I was at before, we had 15, 20 of us to a room, maybe more. Here there only be a few. I was told it's because they try to make sure all the niggas bring in twice as much work. Even if it kill them. It'd be homie back in Mississippi. But I can't sleep there. Can't sleep nowhere. Too many memories. Like my mama. We separated when I was just a boy. I already lost my daddy before that. Don't know where he'd be at to this day. Or if he's even alive. I ain't seen my mama since that day. My sister too. Sheila. Last thing I remember is them sitting on the front of the master's porch. White folks been on everybody. And all of a sudden, finger was pointed at me. Mama and Sheila tried to take him from stopping me, but there's nothing they could do. I still remember Mama's screams be so. Still so clear in my head. Rings in my head every day. Haunting me. Like a ghost. Ever since then, I was alone. Been alone ever since. Even when I was around people, just me, me and my thoughts. This the life that was given to me. This. How can my life be different? How can I be different from all the other niggas here? My mama always told me that I was special. That I was meant for great things. I don't think I believe that no more. You can't sleep neither? No. You the new one, ain't you? Yeah. What's your name? Theo. Theo? Yeah, Theodore. <laughs> Sounds fancy. I ain't never met no one named Theodore before. Yeah. My name's Kia. 
Sure, the lucky. Nice to meet you. People ain't call me lucky though. Just Kita. So, where where are you from? Mississippi. Why you ain't sleeping? Been getting sick to my stomach lately. Been getting sick a lot. I'm sorry. Hit a pass. So, Mississippi, huh? Yeah. I ain't never been in no Mississippi before. You ain't missing much. Same as everywhere else. Where where else you been? Been to Georgia. Rich folks up there. I mean, rich folks here. Master Moore is rich. And there's another man, Mr. White. He live about 10 miles up the road, something like that. He comes by sometime to eat supper with Master and Miss Madeline. He's rich too. He comes in in these nice white horses and this big old thing that's pulling them. Master got one too, but I don't know what they call. Carriages. Huh? They call carriages. Carriages? How you know that? Because the last place I was at, I had the same thing. Carriages? George, what kind of rich folks up there? They ain't any different? From what I can tell, ain't no different. You know, say you been in Mississippi and Georgia, I want to travel one day. You want to travel? Yes. You mean you want to be sold? No! That's not what I mean. I don't want to be sold off. I want to just go, be free. I want to travel the world. When I was younger, Miss Madeline read us a story about a man who thought he'd be somebody. He'd be found in a basket in the water when he was a baby. Moses. Huh? You're talking about Moses from the Bible? No. Yeah, that's it, Moses. You know about Moses? Heard that story before many times. You know how Moses ended up finding out he was somebody else? He wasn't who he thought he was. Right, and he wanted to save his people. Yeah, and he did. Got him to what they call the promised land. Traveled for years, seen all kinds of different places. That's what I want. The promised land? Yeah. Someday, wherever that may be, I want to take my people and just go and travel the world. We find our way. We make our way through the world until we find that promised land. A place where everybody's nice and happy. No matter who you are, no matter what you look like, maybe, maybe my mama will be there. Your mom. I don't know. I ain't never met her. Really? Never met her. Nope. I'm sorry. No need to be. I'll find her one day. I know it. That gotta be hard. I ain't know my daddy really, but I remember him. At least I got that. Can't imagine not knowing my mama at all. I bet she gives the best hugs. I bet they be so warm and cozy. But if I could just get us out to the promised land, Theo, maybe we can get to be together again. Maybe she sang to me, make me feel good. And I sang back to her. Want to make her feel good, too. Maybe she need that. Maybe she been through a lot. But if I could just get us to that promised land, though, Theo, I just know it. How can you be so hopeful? With everything the way it is. Because hope is all we got. Hope is all I got. 
Come on, boys, hurry up now. He's down, lay down. What? Be asleep. Get! Get down your damn feet! Get your nigga asses up now. Down your damn feet! Come on now. Now! Stand up, boy. Stand up. They do look better than the last ones you showed me. Mm -hmm. And look what Mom Paul done got me. For my birthday, named Theodore. Theodore? Different kind of name for a slave. I know. Hey, Theo. Why don't you show my lovely Bella here how you can bring your knees up high fast, too? I want to see. Oh, it is a side. Do it, Come on, Theodore, it. for my birthday. Come on, do it. Come on, Theodore. 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 Look at him go, right there. Yeah, look at him run. Run. Oh, run. Yeah. Uh -huh. Get some rest. Keita done made it a long day for y'all. Y'all can thank her for that. Disgusting. They always picking on her. Taking her out back. What's she done? None, none I ain't seen. She just the one they always pick on. See, every plantation got one. Master Reese, he don't like her. Let them boys there do what they wish to her. No, she seemed good to me. She is. Keita a good girl. Too good of a girl to be in a place like this. She deserves someplace better. Someplace she can be happy. Don't believe there's a place like that around. Up uh, north, plenty of places I think. Hey. Well, that's what I hear. 
can't believe everything you hear. Name's Big John. You Theodore, right? I hear y'all talking, you and Keaton. Yeah, sorry, I ain't mean to wake you. Oh, you ain't wake me. I don't sleep no how. You been here long? Long time. Since Fokita was even born. I ain't even been here a whole day yet. It gets better. You may not think after today, but it do. You been here long, still ain't sleeping? Ain't cause of nothing that happened here. Cause of something that happened to me when I was a, a little boy. I was sleeping one night. I was born in this place in Tennessee. Just can't remember the name of the place. But I stayed there till I got a little older. Well, like I say, I was sleeping one night. These men, they come busting up in my room. They took my mama, kicking and screaming. I run after them, see what they be doing. They be having their way with her. They did that almost every night they could. They even beat me for leaving the room. But after a while, my mama wouldn't, wouldn't try to let me help her. She's afraid I get more beat. Wasn't nothing I can do for her no more. Feel the same way about Keita now. I'm sorry that happened. That's why I can't sleep. Sun almost up, won't be long now. Better get you some more rest before we go to work. I don't think I'll be getting none. Well, this old big John will set up with you then. I hope she gonna be okay. Keita tough, but we help her the best way we can. But I ain't never seen her light up like she did that day she saw you. Keita, she full of hope and all, but it was something different about the way she was looking and talking to you. I don't know. I do. Trust me. Theo, Keita ain't never had nobody. Eyes all she ever had. See, one night when Keita was born, there was an old stink around here. <laughs> People was talking, wondering things. So the boys came up in the room and handed this little girl, this little precious. Baby girl. They gave her to me and said, watch over her, take care of her. Why they do that? Just give it to you like that. Can't say. Why not? Can't for key to say. How you mean? Only a few people know the true story, Theo. If anybody else knew about it, like Master Reese or somebody, it'd be bad for Keel. Got to make her safe. Then why you let her take her like that? Just now. Well, I used to not do it, but I kept getting these for her. After a while, Keita made me stop. She said she be afraid they might kill me. I feel I I I I feel I I feel her now. Uh, Theo, I was not the smartest. I was weak. But Keita, she make me strong. She make me want to live with Keita. It's like a daughter to me. Now both of us getting 
here. I think we both can take care of her. I know she'll like it if you did. As days went on, I got used to the routine around here. Got more and more comfortable with everybody. Especially Keita. Every day I used to wake up wondering what my life would be like. If I was a free man up north, if I was someone else. It used to be all I think about. Day in, day out. When I wake up, when I go to sleep, not no more. I wake up, wake up thinking about Keita. Fall asleep thinking about it. She brightened my day. I think she the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Hey, Kita. Beautiful day today. Hot one, though. It is. It's starting to get warmer. This weather reminds me of something. One time. One day, we was talking and she telling me a story. And I admit, I ain't hear a single word. I just see her. The way her lips curls when she speak. The way her eyes shine in the sunlight. And the way she smile. That smile. The way it covered the whole bottom part of her face. I don't think I ever had a feeling like this before. for inviting me over for tea, Miss Morris. Oh, no, don't, Bella. You are always welcome here. Always. You know that. Our home is your home now. Well, thank you. And please, call me Madeline. No more Miss Morris. You're about to be a daughter to me, so enough of the formalities. If you insist, ma'am. I certainly do insist. And how's your tea, by the way? Best I ever had, I must say. Well, I hate to admit it, but Bess does make the best tea in these parts. I don't know what she does. Sometimes I just want to ask her how she does it. But I'm afraid if I try to do it myself, I'll ruin it and then I'll ruin my taste for it entirely. And we cannot risk that now, can we? Nothing like a good cup of tea, that's for sure. Yes, she's been making it for us for going on about 30 years now, something like that. How you been able to trust her this long? Well, Bess is a mild-mannered thing, and she pretty much keeps to herself. And I prefer it that way. But frankly, if it were up to me, she'd be away from this property and gone. Gone, gone for good. But that's not my decision to make. Always know, dear Bella, the man is the ruler of the house. And when he makes a decision, you just best go along with it. Might I ask? Why the hard feelings toward Bess? Well, it is a long story and one I'd rather not judge up. It's just some things I think need to be admitted. Oh, don't tell Bert, but we are trying to groom a girl for you as a wedding gift. Oh, now y'all ain't got to go and do that. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say anything, but it's just too exciting to keep to myself and it's just between us now. Of course. Who, if you don't mind my asking? Well, I've been thinking about Ronnie. Ronnie? Yes, you've never seen her around here. I don't believe so. Oh, I do apologize. Well, you know, we haven't had her that long. We bought her at one of the local auctions recently. Poor little creature. The family that had her could not afford to keep her any longer. Her or her siblings had to sell them off. She's a young little thing, but she's at the proper age to be groomed for housework. Oh, 
One moment. Bess! Bess, bring Ron Elm in here! You're so kind, Madeline. Anything for a daughter of mine. That's sweet. Bring her my gas, Mrs. Madeline. Well, leave her and bring us some more tea. Yes, ma'am. Oh, and some of those biscuits. I'm craving some. You will have one, won't you? Uh, of course. I don't want to be the only one having one. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Be right back. Well, hurry up now. Ronnie, come on over here and say hello to Bella. She's going to be your new, one of your new mistresses. Uh, hello. Her name is Bella Johnson. We're about to be Morris. Oh, Miss Bella's fine. Uh, okay. Uh, hello, Miss Bella. It is it 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 is an honor to to meet you. Well, ain't that just for life? Thank you, Ronnie. It's a pleasure to meet you as well. Are well, you having a hard time today, Ronnie? I just nervous is all. Well, don't be. Snap out of it. If she don't work out, we can just get you another one. Tell me, Ronnie. Do you miss your parents? Do you miss your siblings? Uh, Come on now, tell me. I does, Miss Bella. Well, don't. Your family will be forgotten soon. It's better that way. Yes, it's better that way. Your biscuits, Mrs. Madeline. And the tea? Oh, I forget it in the kitchen. I go get sick. Oh, never mind. Ask you to do one thing. My thirst for is completely gone now. You're so foolish. I'm sorry, Mrs. Madeline. Be quiet. Just keep your mouth shut unless you're told otherwise. I will say, I was a bit worried about who you might have had grooming. Well, what do you mean? <coughs> Y'all save me one of those, won't you? Why, hello, darling. I didn't expect you back so soon. Oh, it didn't take as long as what I had expected. Well, that's a good thing, no? Oh, always a good thing, dear. Lovely to see you, Bella. You as well, Mr. Morris. <coughs> well, I guess y'all done spoiled the little surprise we had for Bella then, huh? Well, like I said, I didn't expect you back so soon. I thought I could get away with it. Oh, hon, that's okay. It just didn't take as long as what I expected. Uh, Bella, what you think, dear? It's very appreciated. Thank <coughs> you so much. Our pleasure, our pleasure, dear. Dear, you did walk in right in the middle of Bella's thought. <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Bella. Go ahead, please. <coughs> well, all I was saying was that when you said you was grooming one of them for me, I was glad you weren't meaning Kita. And why is that? I don't want to speak out of place. Well, shut up this. Please what? go on. I want to hear this. She is a problem, Madeline. Angry. Every time I see her, she's glaring at me and giving me this foul, dirty look. A look of pure hatred. I'm afraid if something isn't done soon, she might cause harm to me or someone else. Kita won't hurt nobody. That's Kita harmless. What did I just say? Lay off her, Madeline. Wait. <coughs> Let's just get off the subject of Kita. Bess, you won't do that again, will you please? Yes? Yes, sir. Good. Let's just move on with the conversation then. I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to start anything. Oh, that's all right. Let's just move on. Ronnie and Bess, y'all be excused, please. Yes, sir. Every time Kenna gets brought up, you have to go and take up for her. And then every time that black thing stands up and says something, you have to go and take up for her as well. I said drop it, Madeline. I don't understand. After all this time, you still... Woman, let it be. <coughs> Are you all right? I'm fine. It's just been a rather long day. Bella, you'll learn as the older you get. 
the tired you get, the more tired you get every day. As the days go on. You do look a little pale. Like I said, it's just been a long day, dear. Oh, it's a hot one out there today. Ooh, hell. <coughs> Sorry, Paul. <coughs> I thought you was out with Mr. Briggs, Paul. I was, son. Just didn't take as long as I'd expected. Everything go good? Everything went well. Had a little negotiating to do. And? Son, we really shouldn't discuss this in front of the ladies. I guess we'll go out onto the porch then. <coughs> Hold on, Bella. Something wrong with Ma? Oh, she'll be fine. Are you all right, Paul? It's just been a rather long day, son. All right, then. Best tea now! Son, why all the yelling? I gotta make sure she hear me. Best tea! <coughs> Quite the yelling, son. She can hear fine. I'm thirsty. Should have been some waiting on me already. <coughs> Should have been some waiting on me, yes? Yes, sir. You remember that next time, you understand? Don't look at him, look at me. Reese! Yes, I like you best. You know that, right? Yes, sir. You've been a good help inside the house here all my life, as a matter of fact. Just know some things. Get your shit straight, Bess. You gotta know what your masters think before we even say it, before we even ask. You gotta know things, Bess. Don't wanna mess up that clean back of yours over something as small as <coughs> tea. You got me? Of course, sir. Yes, sir. All right, go on now, get it. Son, you ain't gotta be like that. Not all of them's like that. I'm sorry you do it that way, Paul, but I just don't. You see, they all the same in my eyes. They all niggas, and that means they ain't worth a damn to me personally, just professionally. Theodore? Oh, hey now, that boy works. He's still a nigger, but he works like a dog out there. I'll give him that. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Um, bring in over at least 300 pounds a day. Only been three months. Don't say a word, just works. He's beating out Keita with the numbers, too. Well, that's good. Maybe it'll work out for you, son. Yep. Yeah. It won't be long, though. What you mean by that? I have to break him eventually. And, and, and what you gonna do? I mean, he ain't giving me looks, nothing like that, but there's just something there, Paul. Something I can just sense inside him waiting to come out. And when it does, I'll be ready. I'm intrigued by it a bit, I must say. I mean, boy's been so quiet, I like to see what he's like when he snaps. Boy, don't go doing nothing foolish. I know how you are. You know what's foolish, Paul? You seem to be taking up with some of these niggas nowadays, getting soft. You getting soft with your old age, Paul. They gotta know they ain't like us. They worthless. They ain't worth the manure we got them shoveling out in the barn. They ain't like us, and it seems to me like you starting to treat them like they are. Son, you gonna listen to me. I don't You're want no son, lecture from you, Paul. Gonna listen I don't to want me. no lecture from you, Paul. I done had enough of them my whole life, and there ain't nothing you or Ma can do to make me change my mind. You understand me? Son, let me tell you something. That's a strong boy. They outnumber us. You push them too hard, they liable to fight us back. They won't dare. I kill them, every single one of them. And then what you gonna do? You gonna do the work? I didn't think so. I'll just go by molding. Son, it ain't no talking to you. Son, I love you. You're my son and I love you. But you're going to have to pull back just a little bit. You can't push them too hard. They outnumber all of us. All right. You push them and they'll, they'll, they'll fight back. Ain't no money being brought in here. We'll lose the house. We'll lose the land. We'll lose it all. And then I bet you that little miss is out there on the porch. I bet you she won't stay with you. Am I, am I right or am I just lecturing you, son? Sorry, Paul. I apologize for the behavior. You won't tell me how to talk to Mr. Briggs? Son, let's just talk later. It's been a rather long day. I All right, get some then. Rest. Go on, then. Get some rest, Paul. Son, just remember what I said. You ain't got to pull back a lot. Just pull back just a little. Got it, Paul. <coughs> 
Hey, you might want to go see the doctor and get that checked out. I'm all right, son. Paul? I said I'm all right. We'll talk later. <coughs> My ass. Bess! Come get this damn tea. None of us know Master Morris to be sick. Thinking back to if he ever signaled to any of them. He hid it away from us like it was nothing. At least to us he did. He passed on a Sunday. He used to leave services every Sunday morning. That Sunday was just silent. Nobody knew what to say. Nobody knew what to do. At least till now. Master Morris gather us all out here. Say he got something to need to say. Something that all the niggas need to hear. It's been a tough week. Paul was a good man. Strong man. A man with a good heart for me, my mother, my lovely Bella, and just about anybody he ever come in contact with. A generous soul he was. Too generous. And especially to all y'all niggas, he was too generous. And what happened because of that? Y'all got content. Best efforts have not been made here as of late, and that is due to how Burt Morris handled all y'all. But he ain't here no more. The Morris plantation is under my control now, and it gonna be run as I see fit. Let me read you a passage from the good book, one that expresses how I feel about all this. Hebrew 13, 17 say, Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls. And they that must give account, that they may do it with joy, and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. Now, any of y'all know what that means? Of course not. It means obey your masters. Submit yourself to us. We control y'all. We control the fate of all y'all. And it also means to enjoy what you do. If you don't enjoy what we ask of you, then that ain't profiting nobody. It's hurting everybody. That cotton and everything we got coming out of here makes me and mine money. Some of that money we reap goes to getting y'all food to nourish yourselves. So I ask, y'all want to starve? If you want food to eat tonight, then do what we ask of you. I ain't asking, I'm demanding. If you disagree with that, you get lashes. If you complain, if you snarl your nose, if you give us a look, lashes, as many as I see fit. If you disagree with that, then you're disobeying your master, which means you're disobeying the good book, which means you're disobeying the good Lord himself. And I will not have that on my property. Things changing. The 
Burt Morris will be missed, that's for sure. But he ain't here no more. I am. So you better listen and you better listen good. Things change. Yeah, things change. Afternoon, boys. All right, fellas, tell me how these three did, and just so y'all know, I done had five other niggas tied to the post to date alone for not doing their fair share. Let's see how y'all feel. After looking at these numbers, okay to hit. <laughs> She only picked 280 pounds. 280 pounds, really? That's all you could give me? Kita, 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 280. That's a shame. Tiss, tiss, tiss. That's a shame. I try, Master. I do all I can. It'll be the only time this month I don't have with you. Now, if I want excuses, I would have asked you for them. What I need you to do now is keep your mouth shut till we're done, then I'll deal with you. Master, I can't! Can't! You don't understand? What I said, you stupid bitch. Keep your damn mouth shut. Get your ass back. Big John! How do you do today, Big John? Well, Big now I want to know how Big John thinks you did. Go ahead, Big right. John. How do you do today? I gave you my all, mouth. That's not what I asked you. What I asked you. Uh, I... What uh, did I ask you, you big dumb son of a bitch? <laughs> How I did suck. Right you all. Right you all. So how about you answer that for me? And I don't want to hear how I, I gave it my all, master. I want to hear how you did when it come to picking my cotton, boy. What? Well, I, I ain't good with number suck. Of course not. Look at you. Can barely talk. All right, tell me how Big John did. Big John. 338 pounds. 338 pounds? There you go, Big John. Nothing to worry about after all, right? I don't guess so, so. I don't guess so, so. All right, then. Go on back. You done let this old bastard pick more than you. That's sad, Kita. Now on the Theodore, my old reliable. How'd you do today, Theo? I got you 300, Matthew. Best I could tell. Well, you better hope you're all right, because if you ain't, you'll be tied up to the post out back with old Keita there. Your first lashes. Yes, sir. I was tired today. My hands were shaking. I don't know how much I've done today. I just know I went out there and gave him my all, just as I tried to every day. But I'm more tired, more tired than normal. But the thing that hurt me the most, is knowing Keita gonna be taken out back again. She mean a lot to me. She hurt me. She always hurt. Hurt real bad. I wish I could take the pain away from her. I wish God would give me all the pain that she gotta suffer and put it all on me. Just so she ain't got it no more. Wish she could be rid of this place. And everything that go with it. Alright, how Theo do today? Theodore, that boy done picked 407 pounds. Hot damn, Ooh. 407 pounds, you over again. <laughs> Hot damn. Damn, boy. Did it again. You the best thing happened this place in ages, boy. I wish I had a hundred Theodores. Now you say thank you, Master. I was complimenting you, you see. Thank you, Master. You're very welcome. How about this, Theodore? How about this? 
I want to invite you up to the to the big house for some supper tonight. Old Bess and them, they can cook up some mean stew, I'll tell you that. What you think? No way to damn minute, Reese. This is my decision, Paul. All right. All right, yes, sir. Do you don't? Uh, You're not going to accept my offer? Oh, of course, sir. I uh, accept. Thank you. That very kind. Well, I'm a kind man, don't you think? Yes, Master. Good. I'll have Ronnie come get you when it's ready. Yes, sir. Good boy. All right, Keita. Come on now. Boy, let's take her on out back. Give her that 20 for that 20 she owed me. Put that down. Put the damn bag down. Put your ass out back. Please, please, please. No, no, no. Please, please. Did you just come with us, dear? No, 
now, darling. No, I can't just up and leave. I've got responsibilities. I know. Ronnie, go ahead and take those out to the carriage. Yes, Miss Bella. And when you get done, you get back on in here and help Bess with supper, you understand? Yes, Master Reese. It uh, gonna be odd without me here to keep you company for a couple days? You know it will be, darling, but thank you for doing this. Ma ain't been the same since Paul passed. She needs to get out for a little while, clear her head. I agree. I'm just glad I could be of some help. I feel like sometimes I don't have much to do around here. Well, you chose his life, sweetheart. I know I did. I'm not saying I regret it. I just wanted you to have whatever you desired whenever you desired it. You're not having second thoughts, are you? Of course not, dear. Still just getting used to it is all. Being a wife's different than being a fiance. New home, new people. You're gonna get used to it, I promise. I'm gonna miss you. Well, your spot on the right side of the bed will be ready when you get back on Thursday. Good. And uh, do me a favor while I'm gone. Anything, darling. Think about what we talked about last night. Now, that's a big commitment right now, Bella. We can't keep waiting, Reese. I'm just dying for the days our youngins are running around wild and free. I'll think on it, darling. Uh, Ma, y'all ready to go? I don't think this is a good idea. Now, Ma, you need to get out for a little while, clear your head. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. Ma, Ma, you better try for me. Bella gonna be there with you the whole time. That's right, Madeline. Me and you, we're gonna have a swell time, just us ladies. Things just ain't the same, son. I know the end, Mom. I know, I know the end. Sometimes you just gotta move on. Keep going, yeah? Yes. So, you gonna try to have a good time, right? I'll try. Good. I'm proud of you, Mom. Now, come on. Y'all need to get going. What about my bags? Ronnie's done took them out to the carriage. We're all set. All set, Mom. All right, then. Yeah, keep an eye on her, a close one. Don't worry. And have a good time. You know I know how to have a good time. Well, you're right about that. Darling? Yes, dear. Be careful to not have a beat on the house. Bella, don't worry about that. I got everything under control. All I'm saying is, you know, with the whole Kita thing and all. Now, what you mean, the whole Kita thing? Well, they got something, I feel. They got something? For each other. Romantic life. Is that right? From what I see. Actually, I did notice something between them today. I'll look into it. All I'm saying is he might be bowling mad, especially after today. Darling, if he is, then I'll deal with him. What I need you to do is go and have a good time, and I'll be right here when you get back on Thursday. Okay. I love you. I love you back now. Come on now. But you gotta let me clean up. Stuff get in there, you get the people. Come on, Katie. You got to let him help you. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh, it's gonna be all right. No, oh, it ain't gonna be all right, Theo. I can't pick them 300 pounds. I can't do it. Well, no. I'll pick them up for the both of us. Just to be safe. You can't, you can't do that. Wait, hey, don't rise up now. Stay down. And as a matter of fact, I can. Can't. 
can if I wanna. Why, why would you do that? Cause I don't wanna see you like this. That no can't more. take much more to you. Now when you quit that kind of thinking, I ain't gonna let you give in now. Every day I go out. I work. I try. I try my hardest, Theo. I give everything I got. And it still don't matter. I still get lashes. My back, my back is just a piece of flesh holding itself together. I've been here my whole life dealing with these people. They call us animals. Us. But look at what they do. They whip me. They rape me. I was tired. I was so, so tired. You know, sometimes I just want to run. And if they caught me and killed me, I wouldn't mind. Because at least I died trying. Come on, Keita. I'm serious. Sometimes when I go down to fetch water at the creek, I think about just sticking my head in and letting the water fill my lungs until I can't breathe. Keita. I can't do this no more. Now when you look at me, now we gotta quit that kind of thinking. I ain't gonna let nothing happen to you, okay? Why are you so, why are you so nice to me? I ain't it plain as day? I can't tell. Then you blind, woman. Worth everything. I ain't never met nobody like you before. See? Oh, I'm sorry. I just get y'all a little bit more time. What do you mean? He talked to me about some things earlier. He did? He did. Me too. <laughs> really? Yes, all the time. He trying too hard. Is it working? It's been working for a while now. I'm gonna take care of you. Trust me? Of course I do. When I first met you. Good. I'm glad. Theo, the match said he really play him. Okay. Keita, I'm, I'm sorry for what happened. No need to be. You had nothing to do with it. I just feel bad, it's all. Thank you, Ronnie. Now I'm gonna go get Big John to take care of you for you while I'm gone. Okay. Now you gotta let him work on these, gotta let him clean them out. Okay, be careful. Plan on it. I'll be back. Looking forward to it. Taking so long, you reckon? I don't know, Master. Ain't no telling. It is a bit of a walk down there. I suppose. Beth. Yes, sir. You ever get lashes before? Yes, sir. Once before. Wow. Come on, spit it out. Uh, I was taken up for someone. Now, who was you taking up for, Bess? A little girl. Hmm. Interesting. You know, every day, I order lashes upon the backs of niggas. But there's this one in particular, she a mess, I tell you, always been a problem. 
Maybe it's because she ain't had no daddy. That makes someone act out, wouldn't you think? Yes, sir. I guess so. I wonder what happened to her daddy. I don't know, sir. He here, master. All right, now you take Ronnie, Bess. Go on in there and get supper ready. Go on now. Yes, sir. Come on, Ronnie. Come. Have a seat. Don't be no stranger. <laughs> Yes, sir. You like stew, yes? Yes, sir. White cake for dessert. Ever had white cake before? No, sir. You're missing out, boy, I tell you. Bess, despite all her best efforts, does make a good stew. <laughs> I'll give her that. You look tired. I is tired. Mm -hmm. Remember that first day you got here? I told you that sun get to you after a while. I hope that makes me fall out just watching y'all. Sometimes sitting here with Paul, you sit. Everybody had their own seat. This was Paul's. Now I you sit. Right there where you're sitting right now. Always felt alone sitting there. There was only three of us anyway, still. Sitting there by myself to end the sofa like that. I was in my own little world. Still does. You like whiskey, Theodore? Never had none, sir. First white cake, now whiskey. That was the first time for everything. Hold on a minute. Ronnie, bring Theodore here a glass of our finest whiskey. Big bottle, you know which one it is. Hell, just bring the whole bottle on out here. I'm on my full glass already. Time for the good stuff now. The wife, she ain't like me drinking much. Only on special occasions, she say. Now, if it was up to me, I'd be drinking every day of the week. Things in life is better that way. It relaxes me. Thank you. What do you say, Ronnie? You're welcome. Sir. Sir. Now she got some learning to do still. Go, 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 go. Try it. Go, go. Styled, ain't it? <laughs> yes, sir. Ooh, I remember the first time I ever drank whiskey. Ooh, I threw up everything I ate that day. Nasty business. Now, I've been thinking, Theodore, you've been here, what, a year, something like that now? And I've been thinking, I don't know much about you at all. So how about you tell me a little bit more about yourself, Theodore? You intrigued me. You got a wife somewhere, kids? No, sir. Any family at all? You talked about your daddy. I remember that. 
My mama's somewhere, sister too. I um, don't remember my daddy, really. When was the last time you seen your mother and sister? When I was a boy. You remember how old you was? Seven, eight, maybe. I don't remember. Tough deal right there. Being taken away from your mother and sister like that. I bet you had to learn how to man up pretty quick. Yes, sir. You look like you got something on your mind. Oh, no, sir. Now, I like you, Theodore. I wouldn't have you in the big house, okay? So, go ahead. You got my permission. I don't, I don't know. Hey. It's okay. Go ahead. Why you invite me to dinner, master? Well, I like you. That's why. Is that it? What? Excuse me. No, no, no. Master. Go ahead, please. Go, go ahead. Is that it? Because you like me? You know, I ain't never seen a nigga like you before in my life. I've been alive for 26 years. I ain't never seen a nigga like you before. None like when I laid eyes on you. And look at all the work you've been doing. You bring in 300 pounds or more every day. You ain't seen the end of a lash here and at the rate you go, you ain't ever gonna see one. Them two white men that's always around, well, they ain't here. I worry a bit. Master Reese ain't like himself. What he got up his sleeve? You are an extraordinary nigga, Theodore. Extraordinary. I mean, look at your story. That ain't true, sir. Think about it. A young man taken away from his mother and sister, the only kin he ever know, taken away to a, a new place, new home. Where was it? Uh, Georgia, Tennessee, where? Georgia to Mississippi, where I was off to be so. A new place, a new home. No one, nobody. Had a man up for yourself. Felt that keeping to yourself was the best way to get through this fight. Yeah. I know you, Theodore. I can read you like a book. You've been sad a long time. A long time. But you know what? You're safe here. You're safe. You're making me a lot of money, Theodore. Money that helps me take care of my wife, my workers, everything I got going on here. I owe you a lot of gratitude, Theodore. Can I speak the truth to you, Master? Anything you want to say. That ain't true, sir. It's not just me. All of us. We all work hard. And my story just one of many. But you ain't understanding, Theodore, yet. You ain't understanding. Understanding what? You are special. You're special. You've always been special. There ain't nobody like you. My mama used to say the same thing. But I ain't special, sir. I was just brought into this world to live and to go when my time to go. No, 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 you. No, Theodore, I seen it in you since I first laid eyes on you. Why are you so nice, son, master? I. Look, like I said, anything you want to say. 
Just ain't like it. <laughs> oh, I ain't always a mean old son bitch to you, dog. You see, I got myself a soft side. Ask Bella, ask Ma. I just can't always go around showing it. If I was to go around showing myself to be some big old softy, then all the niggas out there, they wouldn't take me seriously. And that's something I gotta have, Theodore. Authority. Which is exactly what I wanna talk to you about. Like what? You done shown so much grit and determination and just pure will, that I wanna give you a promotion. A, pr a, a promotion? Yes, you know what that means. No, sir. It means I want to give you a different job, a better job, a special job, a job nobody can have but you. I've heard of other masters doing this lately, and I thought, well, hell, I got Theodore here. He's a great asset. Why not try it out myself? What is it, sir? Theodore, I want you to be an overseer. Ain't that what Mr. Tommy and Mr. Paul do? Well, yes. So you want me to watch over the field? Precisely. And in the barn, anything I need you to do, really. You gonna get a new room, a new bed, a horse, better clothes, get you out of those rags you're wearing. You so, gonna get to have some authoritative power, Theodore. So anytime a nigga gets out of line, pow, there you are with a whip upon their back. Pow! You make sure everything goes accordingly out there. You run those fields, Theodore. Sir. I mean, don't act surprised. You earned it, boy. It's a great opportunity. I man. can't do it. What you said? I can't do it. Sir. No, no, no. Now what you mean you can't do it? I won't be a nigga up on a horse whipping one of my own. I can't do that. I don't care if it do come with a horse in the new bed. You do realize the opportunity I'm, I'm giving you. Opportunity? So that's cruel. That's harsh. I won't be hurting one of my own. Can't do it. I feed you, and, 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 and I clothe you, and I give you a roof over your head. And this is how you pay me? You deny this job that I ain't just offering up to anybody. Can't do it, sir. You're my, you're my property, boy. I can make you do whatever the hell I want. Not that, sir. You don't have to kill me. I'd rather die. You know, after you first got here, I told Paul, eventually I'd have to break you. And I thought that maybe, just maybe, after all this time, I was wrong. So I offer you this here job to make up for that, and what happens? You, you, you deny me. Looks like I'm gonna have to break you after all. Banks, get your black ass in here now. Yes, Come sir. over here. Turn and look at Theodore. Sir? Do it! Theodore, you haven't noticed anything about Bess here? Take a good long look. 
Go ahead, take a look. Okay, nope. okay. Good and long look. Nope. I'm gonna tell you something nobody else know. Well, not many people that is. Not many people know that I know. But this here is Kida's mama. Master. Now go ahead. You ever notice anything else about Kida? She's a little bit lighter than the rest of y'all. Theodore here has something for your daughter, Bess. Go ahead, answer me. I don't know, sir. I don't I don't know what you mean. You wanna so. tell him? You wanna tell him? You wanna tell him how Kida is my Paul's daughter? Master, please. Oh, shut up! Oh yeah, I know him for a while. He always took up for her, looked out for you, kept you in the big house. Go ahead, Bess. Tell him how my nigger sister came to be. I can't. Why can't you? Why can't you, Bess? Is it because you love dear old Bert Morris? Bess here lay with my paw and then got feelings. Sad. You know what's even sadder? Is that I bet you wasn't the only one. Oh yeah, I bet Bert Morris had him a few of y'all that he picked from. You see, Theodore, Kita ain't special cause Kita was a mistake, a result of lust. Kita ain't nothing but a mistake who ain't made, done nothing but make mistakes her whole life. Paul gave her that big old John out there for safekeeping, didn't want to get rid of his daughter, kept best in the house here, they decided they wouldn't speak on it. It is sad though sometimes, watching Bess stare out the window at her daughter when she tied to the post being whipped, screaming like the animal that she is. Tell me, Bess! Do you hear her cries at night when Tommy and Paul are having their way with her, or do you ignore it like you ignored it her whole life? Best. I know my place. I'm gonna hang you for that. Tommy Paul, get on in here. I know my place, Bess. You should have known yours a long time ago. Master. Nigga, you ain't going nowhere. I'll get to you in a minute. You sit your ass back down in that chair. Tommy Paul, now! Go on, boy, sit down. No, no, no. What the hell's going on? Nigga, bitch, don't slap. I'll be damned. Here you, is what we are gonna do, no. boys. You wanna take her out back? Tired of oh, yeah. Me yeah. until she blew in the oh, face. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all to reconsider your answer, Theodore. Oh, that could be Kita hanging from that tree next. You cool, sir? A bastard if I ever seen one. You ungrateful nigga. You just like the rest of them. You ain't going nowhere, uh, boy! Uh, I'm gonna hang you, boy. Uh, Here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna get the horse. Now I roost around your neck, drag you on out there, do laps around, make all the niggas see, especially Kita. Then, I'm gonna get Big John's dumb ass, carry you out back. By that time, Bess gonna be hanging there from that old, swaying in the breeze. Then, I'm gonna make sure all them watch what I do to you, especially Kita. You and her, y'all ain't gonna have time for no more, each other no more when I'm through, you black son bitch. Oh, Honey, you need 
to go. Nobody needs to see you now. You kiss him. Kill. What are you going to do? This is what we're going to do. I'm going to go get Big John and Keita. We're going to go get our things. You go with us, right? Yes. All right. Go get your things and meet us up the road in an hour. Go on, hurry. I hear you. Don't be seen, now. Dear Lord, forgive me. We gotta go. What? We gotta go now. What you mean? Theo, what's going on? Master Reese is gone. Gone? He gone. Theodore, what did I kill him? I killed him. What? Theodore? I got so tired of him. He pushed me. I got so angry. And I hit him over and over and over again. Then he pulled out a knife on me. And I stabbed him. Then he did. Just like that. Good. What about the others? Miss Bellon and Miss Bella gone for a few days. Tommy and Pop. Oh no. What the oh no? What about them? Tommy and Paul got Miss Bess out back. Huh? No! I gotta go get Bess. What happened? She hit him, and then he hit her, and then he told Tommy and Paul to beat her and hang her from the tallest oak. No! Keita, there's something you need to know. I ain't got much time to explain it. Big John, you get you and Keita's things, and Big John, you tell Keita everything. I ain't going without you! Now, there ain't much time. Won't be long for somebody to see Master's body there. Now, y'all need to go and get your things, me, Ronnie, up the road. Oh, Ronnie coming too? Yeah. Oh, now, now, Big John, you're gonna have to help carry Keita. I'm back all back. I can do it! I, I can do it! I, I, I can't risk it. Theo, you better come back! I will. I promise. I don't want to lose you like this, Theo. I can't. You won't lose me. Now you and Big John get your things. I'll meet you up the road in an hour. Swear to me, Theo. Swear to me. Keita, this is your chance to go and listen. This is your chance to, to find the promised land. I don't want to go without you. OK. Swear to me, Theo. Swear to me. Swear to me, Theo! I swear. I'll be back. Gotta go save your mama now. Mama? I love you, Kira. I love you. Come on, Kira. Let's go get you done. I love you too. I want to say that I got there just in time to save her from hanging from that oak. I want to say me and Vess ran for days. As fast as we could, caught up to Keita, Ronnie, Big John. I want to say that we ran, ran. I want to say that we finally reached the promise land. I want to say that you lived a good life. I want to say, me and Keita grew old together. Watched the world change and had little babies. I want to say that we lived a, a happy life. But I can't. It's 
soon as I got that bass was already hanging. Just hanging. Before I could do anything else, hey, it's on me all of a sudden. Next thing I know, knocked out on the ground. It was a daze. Day after that was a blur. Minutes turned into hours. Hours turned into days. I'm so hungry. I was so thirsty. But most of all, I was worried. Worried about Keita and Big John and Ronnie. Did they make it? Did they escape? Please, Lord, did they escape? Miss Bella and Miss Madeline came in a couple days later. Miss Madeline was so worried about things like death. She was so emotional. Now Miss Bella, it almost seemed like, like it ain't bother her. He was a good man, a good husband. He would have been a good father. But you took that away from him, Theodore. Reese was the only man I ever loved. The only man I ever had eyes for and he's gone because of you. I wanted a full life with him. A life full of pleasantries. A life full of love. But that's gone. I don't think I'll ever be the same, Theodore. I'm sad. It hurts more than I can bear, but I'm angry. And this anger inside of me is burning more than anything else I'm feeling right now, and there ain't no stopping it. I have one goal now. One goal for the rest of my life. You know what that goal is, Theodore? That goal is to ruin you. I'm going to make sure that your life is nothing short of hell on earth. You're going to be coming to me begging, Miss Bella, Miss Bella, please, please just hang me, please kill me, put me out of my misery, I can't take this no more, and I'm just going to smile and walk away. I want you to suffer. I'm going to absorb every bit of strength you got, and when you got nothing left, I'm going to take some more. I'm going to make sure you live a full life, Theodore. A full life of hardship, despair, and pain all until your body finally just gives out one day. Everything you've been through already won't hold a candle compared to this. And with that, let's just say today is day one. Right around in here. Feel.
lock him to the rest of your life, Theodore. I was 25 when I first came here. 25. I was 42 when I left. I remember being out in the field, having this feeling that I ain't never felt before. Till now. Miss Bella made good on the promise. She worked me, worked me hard. Had me out late, had me up early, every day. You know what she say that day? That day Keita died, she was right. It was my fault. They all die because of me. I remember what my, my mama told me when I was younger, that I was special. Killed me, I know she was wrong. I always told myself I wasn't special, hoping one day she would prove me right. But she wasn't. I died, I died sad, sad, lonely man. They say when you lay your head down like Take your last breath. That's where you'll spend the rest of time. I ain't believe that till now. Just lay here. Been here a long time. Long time. And a dark hair. This playing in my head over and over again. All I ever did was kill the ones I care about. Some nights I lay here thinking about my mama. Sheeta, Ronnie, Big John, Keita. I remember what she said to me the first day we met. Hope's all we got. I ain't believe that either. I've been here for Long time, I don't know what, don't what, know what day it is, what year it is. I just see what was. So I, so I lay here and hope, hope the people done got better, hope the people get along. I hope the world is stronger. Hope they never forget what happened. Not everything got a happy ending. Not everything gonna be all good. But I still hope. It's hope. Hope all we got.
southern trees bearing strange fruit blood on the leaves and blood at the root black bodies swinging in the southern breeze strange fruit hanging from the poplar tree pastoral scene from the gallant side them big bulging eyes and twisted mouth since of magnolia clean and fresh did the bird and smell of the burning flesh here is the fruit for the cross to pluck, for the rain to gather and the wind to suck, for the sun to rot and the leaves. Here is